The Los Angeles Dodgers are building a juggernaut. They've claimed the division in 10 of the last 11 seasons. They're pairing Otani and Yamamoto with Betts and Freeman, but I'm sure their front office is still a little bit miffed by the fact that one season got away from them. A season where they still won 106 games. That's actually the season I want to talk to you about for the next 15 minutes. See, this is not a Dodgers video, it's a Giants video. In 2021, out of nowhere, the Bay Area juggernaut combined a new coaching staff, a veteran roster, a flurry of under-the-radar signings and trades, and a decent bit of luck into a magic 107-win season that still makes no sense. In the two years since, they've been a shell of that team, unable to recapture the magic of that year. In another offseason missing out on the big fish free agent, the team feels a bit directionless these days. So let's take a step back and examine how exactly this year came together. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the Jolly Off channel. I'm getting really close to hitting 100,000 subscribers and I could really use your help getting that plaque, so thanks in advance. Let's first talk about how this team was built. They were coming off a sub-500 record in the pandemic-shortened season. The team parted ways with the likes of Tyler Anderson, Drew Smiley, Trevor Cahill, and Trevor Gott, looking to improve upon a 4.64 team ERA from 2020, which ranked 18th in baseball. And they added Alex Wood on a one-year deal to shore up the rotation. Alex Wood is a really good player. He's been around for a while. You should probably know who he is if you're a baseball fan. You should really know who he is if you're the national baseball reporter for ESPN named Jeff Passan, but as shown in this ref guest video from a couple weeks ago, that's clearly not the case. He does not know ball. Oh my God, this is embarrassing. This truly is. I'm going to punt. Ah, Alex Wood. Alex Wood. Last time I did this, I was on top of the world, and right now, Hubris got me. But their biggest move was a trade, quietly flipping reliever Sean Anderson for a relatively unknown outfielder named Lamont Wade Jr. More on him later. They'd be making most of the improvements internally through their own development, though. This would come under the guidance of Farhan Zaidi, who had assumed the role of president of baseball operations two years prior after being poached by the division rival Los Angeles Dodgers. The 2021 squad inherited 11 members of the pre Zaidi organization, most notably Buster Posey, Brandon Crawford, and Brandon Bell, each of whom won at least two championship rings with the team. But he also inherited the ugliness too, including Johnny Cueto in the final season of what turned into a rough six-year, $125 million contract. In that vein, the front office was responsible for building the rotation via free agency with only Logan Webb and the aforementioned Johnny Cueto. He got Wood on that one-year deal and also made sure to keep Kevin Gosman around on a qualifying offer worth $18.9 million. But his best signing on pure value was rounding out the rotation with Anthony DiSclefani, who made 31 starts on a $6 million salary. In terms of of cost efficiency for on-field value, Farhan Zaidi won out on a ton of moves just like this one. He signed the likes of Darren Ruff, Donovan Solano, Dominic Leone, and Zach Littell on minor league deals. Just know that they combined for 6.8 baseball reference war in the 2021 season, with each of them not even being guaranteed roster spots in spring training. A lot of that should be credited to second-year manager Gabe Kapler and his 13-person coaching staff. His coaching roster include the former Rookie of the Year winner Andrew Bailey, who served as pitching coach and has since been poached by the Red Sox, and former Major League starter Brian Bannister, who served as the director of pitching and has since gotten hired by the Chicago White Sox. And they oversaw the oldest roster in baseball by a wide margin. The Giants had just four position players younger than 30 years old appear in 100 games or more that year. My back hurts just reading that stat. With all this being said, Pakoda projections had them at 75 wins and a fourth place finish. No fangrass writer predicted that they'd even make the playoffs. These seemed a little modest, but not overly unfair fair. At the outset, picking them to set a franchise record with 107 wins seemed far more ludicrous. The Giants offense still had plenty of question marks heading into this season. Buster Posey, who had just a 688 OPS in 2019 and didn't even play in 2020, was coming back for what would become one final season at age 34. Brennan Crawford hadn't had an OPS plus above league average since 2016, and at age 34 as well, it looked as though his best seasons might be behind him. Alex Dickerson, Donovan Solano, and Austin Slater were among the class of relatively unknown Giants players who had stellar 2020 seasons, but in such a small sample size, could the team really rely on these guys over a full 162 game schedule? When sized up against the other titans of the National League West, it was hard not to prefer the potent, star-studded offenses and pitching staffs of the Dodgers and the Padres. But in a pleasant surprise, the Giants booked 16 wins in April, good enough for a half-game lead in the division. Their team weighted runs created plus of 90, ranked middle of the pack, but would steadily improve as the season and progressed. Buster Posey specifically shined in April, carrying the load with a 1.123 OPS and six home runs in his first month playing baseball in nearly two years. 
It was the rotation that shined the most with an MLB leading 2.29 rotation ERA in 26 starts in April. But winning big in April rarely means much in the grand scheme of a full season. Take it from a Mets fan. After scoring a pair of series victories over the Padres through the first month and a half of the season, the Giants and the Dodgers finally scored off for the first time in 2021 in late May. Tied for first place early in the season, the series had big game feel, and then the Giants got punched in the mouth. The Dodgers walked into San Francisco and swept their rival, outscoring them 19-9. Despite the early success of their rotation, it was clear that the Giants' offense needed to do more if this team was going to go anywhere. Luckily for them, they got their second shot at their rival fairly quickly, heading over to Chavez Ravine just four days later to open up a four-game set. The offense came to life here, homering twice in each of the four games and winning a clutch game in extra innings on this absurd catch from Mike Talkman. Speaking of those two home runs per game, the Giants would lead all teams with 46 home runs hit in May, and this would become the recipe for their success all season long. The Giants closed May with a 34-20 and record, again with a half-game margin in the National League West. Get used to that closeness, the Giants were within one game of either the Dodgers or Padres in over 50 different days of this long six-month campaign. They had one of their best wins of the season halfway through their next month in June. They hosted the lowly Arizona Diamondbacks, with the opposing team in the midst of what would become an MLB record losing streak on road games. However, Arizona threatened to end their slump early with a quick 7-0 lead at the end of two innings. What seemed like a curse-breaking win for the Snakes would turn into a signature victory for the San Francisco Giants. The way they did it? Their three best weapons home runs, relievers, and a little bit of luck. Steven Duggar's two-run bomb out of the eighth spot in the lineup cut the lead in half. The Giants' bullpen relieved opener Zach Littell for nine innings of this affair in a three-run game in the eighth inning, and as Drupal Cabrera error prolonged what would have been a fruitless rally. With the bases loaded instead, Mikey Stremski unloaded a mammoth go-ahead grand slam for a 9-8 lead that would stick. In a fun come-from-behind win like this one, the work of the bullpen gets lost in the background of the fireworks. So let's talk about this whole group of relievers for a second, because they had an unbelievable season basically out of nowhere. Of groups with at least 600 innings pitched, a class of 68 different bullpens, the 2021 Giants bullpen is the best since the turn of the century with a 2.99 ERA. Even when expanded to 500 innings pitched, they still rank in the top 10 even with way more volume than the teams in front of them. But I think the most impressive part is the members of said bullpen because it's truly a ragtag group of stooges and doodads. Jake McGee saved a career-high 31 games with a 153 ERA+, plus, throwing only four-seam fastballs 90% of the time. He didn't even pitch last year. Tyler Rogers led the league in games pitched with a 2.22 ERA, even though his top speed was 83 miles per hour. Dominic Leone pitched to a 2.75 ERA plus in the best run of his career. The most recognizable face from this group, Camilo Duvall, only pitched half the season for the team. They appropriately led all MLB teams with a 1.99 collective ERA in June. Despite losing two close games to Los Angeles to close out the month, the Giants finished their third straight month with at least 16 wins and still kept themselves a game Game and a half ahead of the Dodgers in division standings. While we've been giving a ton of shine to the pitching staff and how they were built, the offense, which ranked second in baseball in home runs at the end of three months of play, was certainly doing their part. Buster Posey was playing at an MVP level, but it goes beyond just the heart of the team. Brandon Crawford's 2021 season is one of the most peculiar years of the entire modern era. Usually revered for his stellar defense, Crawford was blowing his career slash line out of the water with a serious progression in plate discipline and numbers against fast ball specifically. His 10.2 walk percentage was by far the best of his career, and he slugged over 600 versus heaters compared to the mark of 387 from the season prior. Fangraphs did a great article analyzing the changes that Crawford made, including a more open stance, shaved off excess movement, and a quicker barrel, and he was able to revitalize his career. Add that with his established premier defense, and he led the winningest Giants team ever with 6.1 wins above replacement on the season, and a fourth place MVP finish. Crawford and Posey were stable everyday players, but the Giants offense would bludgeon opponents with a brigade of platoon specialists and pinch hitters. Brandon Belt, Mike Ustremski, Steven Duggar, and Lamont Wade Jr. had at least 250 plate appearances against righties and less than 125 plate appearances each against lefties. Manager Gabe Kapler was unafraid to sub out starters for pinch hitters early in games, so long as though he was getting the best matchup possible. In their unique roster setup, the Giants basically had two entirely different lineups that they could shove out 
out at any given moment. Here's a good example. After playing just nine games in the first two months, Lamont Wade Jr. found his role with the Giants. The aforementioned trade acquisition broke out in June, and he was a regular starter atop the Giants' offense for the remainder of the season. He closed 2021 with 18 home runs and a 117 OPS plus in a breakout season at age 25, but he was primarily a platoon guy with over 300 plate appearances against righties and just 42 against lefties in the entire season. The way the Giants got away with this is by using Darren Ruff on the other side. Ruff clubbed six 16 home runs and an OPS over 900 in his first regular MLB season since 2016, spending time in Japan to recoup his value. He did so facing mostly lefties, the opposite of Wade Jr. When we combine these two guys' numbers and their dominant splits, they amount to an 898 OPS and 27 home runs. This platoon brigade was featured at many different positions. Tommy Lastella and Donovan Solano shared second base. Mikey Stremski and Austin Slater shared right field. The Giants didn't have world-beating talent in their lineup, but they put their guy in position to succeed day in and day out and gave them rest when they needed it. They had 15 different position players play at least 75 games and had 10 different hitters with at least 10 home runs. In fact, the Giants team clubbed the most home runs by a squad ever without having a single 30 homer player. The 2021 Giants were a perfect storm of career years, pristine health, and maximized value from quiet roster moves. It's hard to quantify how exactly they pulled this off without shrugging your shoulders and attributing it to luck, but 107 wins isn't exactly exactly any normal lucky winning season. It's one of the top 15 best seasons in MLB history and 162 full game schedules. The Giants scored two more clutch series victories against the Dodgers in July to take their season record against the Juggernaut to an even 8-8, eight eight, with one more series left in September. These two squads were the two best teams in Team ERA in August by a decent margin. For the Giants, a big contributor was their transform rotation. Zadie did well to acquire the components of this rotation at low cost, but it was on the Giants pitching lab to actually help each of them execute their plan. That involved pretty drastic arsenal changes to their three biggest starting pitchers. After a rough 2019, the Giants scooped up Kevin Gosman for the 2020 season and saw him make 10 solid starts. In those games, he was incredibly efficient with his split finger fastball, garnering the best opponent's average in the league at a 0.97 batting clip. So an easy, big resolution for 2021 was to simply throw that pitch more and rely less on his slider and changeup. And such a simple adjustment was very effective. Gosman's splitter remained lethal despite adding nearly 8% to its usage. He plays 6th in baseball with his 2.81 ERA and 227 strikeouts, finishing 6th in National League Cy Young voting. But he couldn't hold up this rotation all on his own. For someone like his teammate Anthony DiSclefani, less was more, instead of more being more. The Giants recognized the sweeping motion of his slider was generating whiffs, but it was often getting taken for a ball as well. In 2021, the coaching staff helped Disco take eight inches of movement off of his slider to add two miles per hour to its velocity, resulting in a sharper pitch that could attack the zone and dive out more efficiently. DiSclefani had his best season thanks in part to his new slider, which registered a career best negative 11 run value, and his 3.17 ERA in 31 starts was the best mark of his career, ranking 11 in the National League. Finally, there was young Logan Webb coming off a frustrating pandemic season where he had a whip over 1.5 in over 50 innings. For him, attacking the zone was still part of the formula, but the Giants coaching staff wanted him to focus less on striking batters out. He simply didn't have the velocity to get that job done and was often allowing tons of hits. Instead, Webb fully leaned into his sinking fastball, jacking up the usage of that pitch from 15% to 37.8%, doubling it and then some between seasons. This led him to have the highest ground ball rate of pitchers with at least 140 innings pitched at 60.9% in 2021, which in turn led to a breakout season. He's only gotten better since, and he hasn't looked back. These three led the charge on the Giants rotation ERA of 3.44, which was third in all of MLB in 2021. August was the best month of the year yet for San Francisco, going 19-9 and and holding first place all month for the third month in a row. But they simply couldn't keep their foot off the gas, with the Dodgers still managing to pass them up on the first day of September. From there, San Francisco put together a remarkable 21-6 month of September and a clutch set victory against the Dodgers that ended up being the difference in them beating out LA by one measly game for the National League West Division. They became the first non-Dodgers team to win the NL West since themselves back in 2012, and it hasn't happened since. The Giants were on their way to the playoffs, but most of you know how this story abruptly ends. With a blown call in a decisive Game 5, pre 
prematurely ending one of the greatest seasons ever. But the bitter end shouldn't take away from what was a sweet journey. In the two years since, the Giants have regressed considerably and have seen the premier coaching staff dissipate. The stars that they built or nurtured have left or retired, and in the midst of another frustrating offseason missing out on a big star free agent, the team does feel a little bit like they're without a compass. That's why it's fun to look back on the novelty of this 2021 season and marvel at how unlikely it was for all of those roster pieces to come together in perfect harmony. We may never see anything quite like it again, and they have rightfully earned their spot in baseball history. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please leave a like on it and subscribe to my channel. I'm getting really close to hitting that 100,000 mark, and if you watch this video all the way through, you might like some of the other content on the channel, so I'd appreciate you hitting that big red button. That'll do it for this video. Happy 2024 to all, and I'll see you guys next time.